Hello everyone. Hello, hello. It's Drum Free Friday. First day of the week. Indeed it is. Chance, are you coming up? They've been, both cats have been haunting me. <laughs> and now that I have the cameras on, they're nowhere to be found. Hi Nancy, hi Becky, Marilyn, Gail, Linda, hello everyone. I hope you're doing okay today. Maybe better than okay. I hope you're doing great. Are you coming up here? Huh? Well, come here. <clears throat> this is your this is your chance because literally and figuratively, this is your chance because you're gonna get shut in the other room. Yes. Oh, good, Sandy. Good, good. All right. Well, um, I'll let you see the the monster. Can you scoot back a little bit? <clears throat> Hi, Angie. Hi, Denise. I'm glad you're here. Hi, Kathy. Riri. Um, I'm Riri. Riri. If you would like me to send you a card, I need your address. So, if you want to do that, you can contact me um, through Instagram, or you can contact me through the website, which is actually the better way to do it, at howtogetcreative.com, and then fill out a support ticket. You go down to the bottom of the page, and you'll see where it says contact us or support. If you would like that, I would love to send you a card because you were so kind to help um, show your love and caring for Charlie. If you don't want, if you don't want to do that, it's perfectly fine. But I just wanted you to know. Okay, <clears throat> and I have one more person. Um, hi, Lorraine. Hi, Nancy. Sorry, I'm gonna scooch over here. I lost a bunch of. Things. Let's see. Lorraine. Claus man's in the house. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Aunt Beck. I think I said that. <clears throat> Four days of moving. Huh. Are you there? Are you in one spot? Hi, Linda Patrick. Are you in one spot? I hope. Hi, Joan. Oh, he is a loud purr. Loud purr. You are welcome, Linda. Thank you. Hi, Tori. Hi, Pen. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time. Hi, Sherry. I haven't seen you in ages, Pen. Good to see you in the chat. Okay, so Chance is here. Charlie must be on the floor. Charlie? Charlie? Charlie, are you coming over here? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Hi, Linda McAllister. I put your card in the mail. Uh, hi, Marion. Cats are settling in. Son's cats are not thrilled. I bet that's true. Hi, Lori. Yes, they were both stalking me today. Hi, Carla. It was so nice to see your Mooney kitty on, on the video the other day. Hi, Nell. <clears throat> Yeah, it should be on the way. I don't know how long it'll take to get there, but hopefully it won't take too long. Uh, hi, Terry. Oh, I could tell he was not too excited. It's, it's really funny. When uh, we started taking the cats downstairs, because my studio level is the mid the middle level of our house and um, hey Laura how are ya <laughs> oh I bet two hour drive with singing cats yeah <laughs> hi Dorothy hi Coco uh, Catherine Coco Catherine I see your name and I want to say Cocoa Puffs 
Hello, no wheat. Um, what did I start to say? Riri, did you hear me about asking for your address <laughs> if you want to give it to me? The other person I would like to have an address for is Neen, N-E-E-N. That's her name in the chat. Those two people I don't have addresses for. If you want to give me your address, great. I'll send you a card. If you don't, that's fine too. I'm having a coffee. Um, yeah, so our, our, uh, this is Chance. Charlie's not made an appearance yet, but he's, he's wandering around here. <laughs> he's probably going to wait till Chance is done. Um, your tail is lethal. So anyway, the cats, when they moved in, okay, Riri, okay, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you again. I'll just give you a verbal thank you. Um, hi, Robin. Um, let's see. Mm. So anyway, the cats, when they moved in here, moved into my, my, um, oh, your cat, your tail is being a pain. They moved into this level in the studio. Looks like I've got you, like you're about ready to fall off the, like you're about ready to fall off the table. Maybe that's better. Maybe that's a little better. Anyway, um, so they moved into this level on the studio because it was where we had two dogs at the time. And so it was a place, the studio level was a place where I could have them and they were um, they'd never been around dogs i knew one of my dogs would probably be fine like my sweater with the siamese cat on it i've had this sweater for years and years and years way before i ever got a siamese cat which i never thought i would have ever and now i have two of them <clears throat> so anyway um one of my dogs i knew would be okay with the cat or i was pretty certain she would be uh, but the other one, being Muppet, <laughs> was like, I don't know about this one, because she was relatively new. <sighs> um, yeah, hi, Cheryl. <clears throat> and hello to everyone who's coming in. If I miss saying hello to you, know that, hi, Gina, I just saw your name. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. So, anyway, they lived up here in the this middle level of the house because I could close it off and that way I could control the introductions between the the cats and the dog and I could monitor very closely all the interaction and see how everybody was going to get along because any of you that know when you introduce someone new into your pack how stressful that can be and since these cats had never been around a dog, I didn't know what they were going to do. Anyway, so years go by, and uh, we lost our golden retriever, so we're down to Muppet and two cats. And I don't remember exactly what prompted me to do it, but one day I decided I would take the cats to the lower level of the house, which they were used to creeping out into the foyer and going down the steps, and they would um, sit on the steps and talk to me in their melodious Siamese language, <laughs> wouldn't you? Yeah. And um, so I decided that I would just take them down there with me and see how they did. So I did. Well, I'm telling you, they panted. They drooled. You talk about nervous Nelly cats. Oh, my goodness. They were so nervous. They didn't know how to deal with that, neither one of them. And I had them together because I knew I couldn't, couldn't have just one. And so I took them. All right, you got to get away from the camera. He's going to want to rub his face on the camera. Um, and so, <laughs> so, you know, I thought, well, I'll just see how they do. Well, it took them approximately 30 minutes, and they're like, well, <laughs> this is great. Because we have a soft couch to land. Not that they don't have pallets all over the studio, mind you. But we have a soft couch. And we have our person. And we have our other person. And that dog thing. Well, somebody seems to be controlling the dog thing. So, yeah. So, anyway. Such is life. 
It's so much fun. So much fun. Hi, Rhonda. Yeah, so much fun to uh, see what how they react in new situations. When it goes positively, when it doesn't go positively, it's not so much fun. Right, Becky? Ah, yeah. Okay, shall we get Charlie? Can I get Charlie and have him up here first thing? Yeah. How about that? How about that? Would that be okay? I'll go see if I can find the Charlie man. Charlie, where are you? You want to come up here? Yep. You want to come up here and say hello to everyone? No. No? Oh. All right. Let's take a look at you. How you how's your face looking? Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, I have to switch spots with you because you're just too, you take up too much space. I don't have enough room. Can you get down on the table? You're knocking my paintbrushes on the floor. Yeah, how about if you stay over there? Would that be good? Would that be okay? <sighs> yes, okay, it's your turn. Here's Mr. Charlie Boy. Hi, Krissa. So I'm trying to catch the chat. Hi, Barbara Clark. <laughs> I call the AO. <coughs> yeah. Sorry about the cough. Um, I seem to have come up with the change of season reaction yes so we'll see how I how I do today with the incessant talking um, if I get a little bit quiet you'll understand <laughs> you'll understand why I do have things to drink and I do have my supply of cough things Straight from Switzerland, I'm sure. Yours have been awful. Oh, I'll tell you what. I normally don't have much trouble. But um, for some reason, yeah, for some reason. I don't know about you guys, but if you ever go, if I ever go through an emotional upheaval, which I did, obviously. It's not unusual for me to have that express itself um, physically. Yeah, so anyway, now you got your head where they can't even see you. Let me scoot you back. There you go. They can see you now. Yeah, so then when you stretch out, they can still see you. Will that work? So anyway, the Charlie Boy report is that he has had a pretty good week. He's had a good week. And um, he started eating. And so he's doing better with the eating. Um, he's a, he's a, there's no polite way to put this. He's a puker. <laughs> Some cats are like that. And he's not, he's not, he's not as bad as he was, which is good. Still a little bit now and then, even with the new food. I'm relatively certain that he has not lost much weight. Um, I am monitoring his food very closely. Uh, very closely. Hi, Scotty. Good to see you. Um, and uh, he's just been... Um, he's been drinking a lot of water, which is good. Not overly so. He's doing all the things he's supposed to be doing. His attitude is better, right? Are your attitude better? He's purring. He's still a little congested in the in the nose area, but it sort of comes and goes. It's very strange. So I don't know. I'm hoping I don't have to take him back to the vet. That was a hard experience for him. 
but um, I think if I hadn't, we probably would have been in trouble since his sugar was so off the charts. Me too, Joan. Me too. So he's he's acting more like himself, aren't you? He's greeting me. I my studio door. Um, that door is shut when I leave um, late at night when everybody's, you know, had their last food and litter box is done and all that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> and I leave the studio, I shut the door. And the door is a glass, has small glass panels in the door. So it it's, goes the full length of the door. So they can sit there and look through the door <laughs> and do this. <laughs> So they either mouth at me, or sometimes if they're um, exuberant enough, they make noise. So he has actually been um, at the door several mornings this week, and when I was coming downstairs, because the bedrooms in our house are in the up upstairs level. Yeah, so that's been nice. So those are all good reports. Let's see, anything else? Oh, he got on, I think I may have told you this last week, I don't know. He got on the table to be in the sunshine, and he's done that a couple times this week, too. And to do that, he they have a route that they go up on this table, and up on that pile, and up on this, and up on that, which gives you an idea of what my sewing room is like, so that they can get up to my, uh, get up to the cutting table where they have a pallet in the window. So, yeah, mine won't eat the wet food either. They're, they've offered it to him, but no uh, no wet food. Well, it's like, nope, not having it. They can't chew anything because they have no teeth. The vet would prefer that he had wet food, but he's not having it. So anyway... Now, this behavior right here is not because he doesn't feel good. This is what he would do <laughs> under any circumstance. <laughs> Hi, Judy. Yeah. I don't know if he has allergies. They suspect that he has asthma. So, allergies, asthma. I don't know. Yeah, Becky, I hope that, I hope that doesn't end up to be the case. I hope you I hope you skate through this experience. I hope you just skate through it, right? Just skate through it. <sighs> he is great. He's a great kitty. So yeah, he's a great kitty boy. Oh the big stretch. Oh it's such a big stretch. Are you ready to go in the other room now? He's like, oh no, hell to the no. Don't wanna go in there. Wanna stay in here. I want to stay right here. Well, maybe I can let him stay here while I show you a card I got in the mail. That's a very, that's a lot of Charlie right here. Let me zoom out a little bit. Because all you were going to get was Charlie's big old back. <laughs> so, you're going to see a bunch of um, stuff. As well as... Charlie. <laughs> so there he is from the top down. Hi, Candy. Nice to see you. Oh, good, Becky. I'm glad. I hope you're in one spot now. Hi, Margaret. You're in one spot now, right? Not going back and forth anymore, I hope. Um, Charlie is 14. Chance is 13. Muppet the dog is 12. 12, 13, 14. Oh, good, Becky. That's good. That's good. So I received this card in the mail. And so I'll show it to you while he's still here. But I thought it was so pretty. This is from a viewer. I don't know if she's here. It's Katie. Katie O'Party is her name in the in the chat. I forgot what her entire name is, but Katie O'Party is what she goes by. And she made this card. 
with trim and butterflies. With brave wings, she flies. Isn't that sweet? Looks This is, it's not handmade paper, but it almost looks like it is. So pretty, so pretty. With well, such a nice note, and yeah, I love handmade cards. Isn't that pretty? I love how it just all kind of blends together, you know? Anyway, that was so sweet. So sweet. I know. So pretty. So, if Katie comes in, um, tell her that I showed her card. I'll try to catch her, but sometimes I don't see. Once I get started doing stuff, sometimes I don't see. Um, let's see. What else? Oh, those of you who... Um, well, let me start over. Let me start over. I'll put the camera back on him in a minute. Chance wants to be up here, too. It's a zoo here, people. It's a zoo. So, let me start again, because I didn't really officially greet you guys. And Chance is on the floor, whining. <clears throat> That's par for the course, too. So, anyway, greetings to everybody who's here. Welcome to Drama Free Friday. <laughs> Brought to you by HowToGetCreative.com. I'm so glad each and every one of you are here. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. And I'm just... You can't push stuff off my table, okay? I'm just so glad you're here. Um, and the invitation is always open to all of you to check out HowToGetCreative.com. Become a member over there. We'd love to have you... We have all kinds of things happening there, so we'd love to have you do that. So I just wanted to say that, and it is Drama Free Friday, because there is so much drama in the world <clears throat> that this is a respite from the drama, okay? So there's things that we don't talk about. Normally, I don't even have to say this, but I'm going to say it just because of what's going on in the political climate. Um, we stay away from politics totally okay i don't care what side of the fence you're on just because i don't talk about politics does not mean i don't have very strong opinions doesn't matter we don't talk about it doesn't matter doesn't matter doesn't matter doesn't matter okay don't want to hear it <clears throat> don't want to read it <laughs> nobody wants to read it so that is the key thing we are absolutely 100 percent staying away from right now okay the other thing that we stay away from is the subject of religion. Once in a while, I will discuss spirituality um, in a broad sense, but, you know, yes. Again, just because I don't talk about those things or don't embrace them here doesn't mean I don't have a very strong belief system of my own. So, anyway, it is, it is Drama Free Friday. We're staying away from all of that okay all right um <clears throat> so i gave you the charlie report and the chance report charlie's not really purring but normally he does now uh chance is as ornery as he ever was so we have that out of the way and um so hi tracy dean um so anyway, I think that is that. I agree, Marilyn. I totally agree. But they don't. <laughs> so we're in charge of the button. Yep. Okay. So I have coffee here. And um, it's primarily to keep my throat wet. And so now, let's see, can I put you in the other room? Oh, I was going to tell you that the carvings that were spoken for last week should be delivered today to um, those of you that wanted them. So they should be delivered to you. And we're talking about the wood carvings <laughs> from, from Clausman's Etsy shop, which you'll see the link roll through periodically. Hi, Annette. Um... <coughs> so I'll put him back on the where you can see him for a little bit longer because I'm getting ready to put him in the other room chances on the floor giving himself a manicure 
yes he is he has no teeth but and and he doesn't have front claws but he has back claws and he grooms those back claws like you would not believe just about the time that he gets them all groomed up then i cut them off <laughs> and he starts over again and gets them groomed back to nice sharp points that poke holes in my leg yep okay um <clears throat> Oh, there's Race. Hello, Race. Good to see you. Okay, so this kitty is going to go along with the other kitty. They're going to go back behind door number two. Or door number one. I never can remember what I call it. You'd think I'd remember what I name things myself, but no. No, I don't. Are you ready to get in the other room? All right. This this is this is a picture, you guys. This this is Chance at his best. Okay, that's Chance at his very best down there. <laughs> Sorry, I can't I can't look at him and not laugh. That is a Buddha cat, if there ever was one. Yeah, Buddha Buddha. Now, I gotta get him off because he's gonna start licking his, you know what? Oh my gosh, he's such a funny, weird cat. Okay, so let me put them away. Let me wash my hands. I'll be right back. Okay, come on. You're like holding a slinky. Yeah. Like holding a slinky. Come on, you cannot hide from me. That's not nice. Come here. Come on. Come here, Chance. Come on. Well, come here. Come here. Come here so I can get a hold of you. Come here. Come on. Come on. He's under the table, people. Just beyond where I can get a hold of him. Okay. I got you. I got you. Okay. Whew. It's a lot of work here. Cat wrangling is a lot of work. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Again, I apologize for for the um, barking seal sounds that you hear. Um, but the longer I talk, the the worse it could be. <laughs> so, just saying. <coughs> Lori loves Montana. You are a rat. We need to ban her right out of this chat. Tattling to race on me. Tattling to race on me, honestly. Hey, Kathy Arbor. Hi, Annette. Nanette, sorry. Nan we have Annette and Nanette. Which I didn't say either one of those quite right. But anyway, okay. So I thought... First of all, I'm going to show you a um, Clawsman's latest. I showed some of you this the other day. Well, let me. I'm telling you, I'm all over the place. I did some extra streams. And so I thought I would show this to you. Because this is what I was working on during those other streams. In case you didn't happen to catch them. Um, <clears throat> This is the beginning of a fabric mandala. And so some of you had watched me base coat it. And the base coating is done in three colors of the Arteza metallic fabric paints. 
and this is one of the patterns from I don't think I it's here somewhere but I don't know where here it is this is one of our patterns from one of the ebooks but just simplified so this is flower in flower mandala this is from the mandala melange ebook so you can see that just because it's drawn a certain way doesn't mean you have to leave it that way so I just simplified it and I'm painting on white muslin <clears throat> <laughs> well, Riri, we'll find out. <laughs> so this is done. The base coating was done, and this is on the channel here on um, doing this with the Arteza metallic paints, fabric paints. And then I went back and I recorded. It is not online, but I have recorded the process of shading it. And the shading is done with a water brush and ink tense blocks. So that's as far as I've gotten. And I'm not sure what's going to happen next, so there you go. Anyway, I just thought I would show that to you so you could see how far it had progressed. <clears throat> Last week we talked about Clausman's brand new Etsy store. And this is the latest addition to the Etsy store. He is a snowman. Okay. He is a snowman. He's going to regulate the fluids. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> so he's a snowman with a coat on um, and a scarf. He has on a scarf. He has on a top hat. He has a uh, hand carved pipe. Okay, is a hand carved pipe. And I didn't even hear any bad words coming from across the studio. I didn't even hear <coughs> bad words when he was carving this little teeny thing. Those are very tricky to carve. And then I suggested that he might need to have a little tiny bird. And so here is his little tiny bird. I think it looks like a penguin you know kind of penguin like that's how I would paint it is I would paint it like a penguin because I just thought he needed that to sit on his hat although <clears throat> he could sit down here on the base because this is like a uh, snow you know so he could sit down here I just think he would be adorable up on on the hat so anyway <clears throat> this guy is in the Etsy shop if you are interested in that guy he's available and I also thought I talked to you last week um, about the some of the resin that we've done some of our pieces in resin <clears throat> well yes there will be there will be Santa um, there will be Santa painting today but um, I, I'm done with that color Carla so you'll be okay <coughs> sorry Carla it's not my fault that they that Ceramco Delta Ceramco named it that they could have named it something else but that's what they named it I didn't have anything to do with that Carla nothing <coughs> okay <coughs> Again, apologies for the throat clearing and the coughing, but that's the way it is. So I'm going to show you some of the resin pieces. And just so you can get an idea. And some of these have... May, you, may be, you might see a little cat hair. I'm just saying. You might see a little cat hair. <coughs> sorry, Carla. Get, sorry, Carla. Earworm. Get another earworm. You'll be good. <laughs> so these pins began their life as wood carvings. These are these are castings in resin. Um, Clausman 
I, I don't know if you can, I guess you can hear me. Would you see if you can find me a mold? Um, I intended to do that before I came in here. Could you see if you can find me a mold for the resin pieces, just a small one, and bring it in? I just wanted to show them what the molds look like. If you can, if you can't, it's fine. We'll do it next week. So anyway, these pieces started as wood carvings. Hi, Margaret. And then they're molded in, there's a hand produced mold. So Clausman makes the molds. We don't do this anymore. Um, but this is what we have left at this point in time. So these are, um, start as wood carvings, as I said, then he makes a mold. The molds do not last forever. So the molds have a, have a certain life, have a certain number of pores that you get from them. And then they're gone. And they also shift and change over time. So even though you're using a mold to reproduce them, you don't always get exactly the same result. And also we use different kinds of resins depending on what was available and what is available and um, and I'll show you some of some of that here in a minute but anyway and then they have to be cleaned up after they come out of the molds they have to be cleaned up and sometimes sanded or buffed or whatever and um, and then they're painted and then they're varnished and so forth okay thanks okay yep yeah, that's perfect so this is an example of a mold. They're not glamorous, as you can see. And this, this little guy right here, you can see this little guy right here. That's the mold for this piece right here. Okay. So you can just see it's an, I think this is called RTV, I believe. <clears throat> But you have to you have to to figure out the container that will hold the mold material because this is liquid and you have to put your wood original in and you have to pour the stuff around it the the piece has to be the wooden piece has to be suspended so and held in place so it won't float out of the mold and it, and then it has to be you know it has to be clamped so this is part of the mold not not all of it just part of it <clears throat> and if I tell you anything wrong um, um, Claus man will correct me so then after the mold is made so that's all the mold process then you have to cut it apart extract your wooden original <clears throat> and uh, sometimes you have to modify the mold which I think is what's happening here you modify the mold and then you put it back together and it's a whole process then you mix up your resins and the resins get poured in and you hope that there's no air bubbles I have some that had the air got into I don't know if I can put my hand on those or not they're pretty funny actually I like them when they screw up but um, Claus man was always very disturbed when they would do that I'll see if I can find one here in a minute and show you so anyway you get a certain number of pores from them and then eventually the molds break down and that's the end of that so you either have to make a new mold or you just say that's it we're done okay so <clears throat> That is how the process works. And so each of these are done uh, that same way. Okay. Uh, but these are sometimes I we had we decided to mold like this was an ornament. So we had some of these that are ornaments, and I don't know if I still have any of those or not. And then sometimes you can mold half of it and you can get a pin out of it. So that's what you can can do. Same thing with these. Okay, so these are pins. So they're coat pins. And I we had another style as well. 
which I forgot to go up and get out of my jewelry box. But I'm sure you'll see me wearing that as we get closer to Christmas. So these are these are some of the um, pieces that are resins. So this little guy is from that mold I just showed you. So sometimes we molded, poured it up as an independent freestanding miniature like this. And sometimes they we poured them as, um, I say we, like I had anything to do with it. And the only thing I'd ever do is say, do this. Or could you do that? <clears throat> and then uh, I would take over after that process was all done and do the painting. Okay. They are, everything is limited. Absolutely. Then I put the pin backs on the backs of them. When I'm painting them, I put the pin backs on because it's so much easier for me to hang on to them. This was another one. This one, if you look at him, is very textured. I don't know if you can see how textured that is. That's the texture of this comes from the wood, which is mahogany. Okay. And I love that. Clausman bitched and complained about carving that wood. <laughs> Oh well, get over it, man, get over it. Here's another one, right? So sometimes you can see, let me see if I can put a couple of them up here where you can see, I don't know if you, well, you can see the differences because some of them are thicker than others. Just depends on how they come out of the mold and how much cleaning up they have to be, have to have done and so forth. So here's another one another little guy um, this this was an ornament um, he's a big pin so we molded him not only as a an ornament but also as a pin and that's it that I have with pin backs on them we will have in the shop at some point when time permits and all of that um, we will have some of the pin blanks the resin pieces aren't they funny <laughs> you guys and your I'm not going to tear up the cards use them use them what I want to show you in this, this is how we'll have a set. I don't have very many of these, honestly, um, of the sets of pins like this. I may have some smaller sets or whatever. I don't know. But what I wanted to show you, these will eventually go in the shop. What I wanted to show you about these is that they will look different sometimes because the resins sometimes are different. And there's three different resins in this group of pins. So this is one, this is another one, that's another one. So these two guys are the same. So it just depends on the kind of resin that we used as to what it looked like to start with. So there's that one, uh, that set. And these two, I have two sets of four. But you see, some of the resins are quite yellow. Some of the resins are are that kind of pink, almost a flesh tone. Santa's flesh, Carla. <laughs> that was just for Carla. <clears throat> just for Carla. Oh, beagles howling. Oh dear. Chess pieces. Sure enough, we could. <laughs> So those are, that's how some of the, um, I just wanted to show you kind of the process. So just because I do something one way certainly doesn't mean it's the only way to do it, right? 
I do have a funny thing. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you a funny thing at the end of this. I do have a funny to show you. We also um, did a set of miniatures. So I'm going to show you this. Uh, these are, we have a few sets of these. Um, they will go in the shop as well. Um, okay, so this is the view from the top. Let's see if I can give you a better, better look here like this. This it's hard to show some of the um, it's hard to show some of these little carving pieces because of the three dimensionality of them. Hey Jamie. And so these are three little you can call them whatever you want, elves, Santas, whatever. But these are a set and so this little guy is um, from this pin came from this guy right here. Again, these all start out as wood carvings. And so these are on little bases. These are resins. Okay, these are resins. They're all hand formed, hand poured, hand carved originally. Hey, Dar. <coughs> um, Not to belabor the point, but I just want to make sure that you understand that they're all, it's all hand. They're very labor intensive. We'll just say that. I totally walked away from, both of us did, from away from all the resin stuff for quite a while because you just like, you just get, it's like I'm over it, you know? And, um, but these are independent. They, you know, have their own little spots that they fit. And there's a story behind this. It has Claus Man's paw, the um, tiger paw, because he was known as Tiger Claws Carvings, and still is, but he no is known here as Claus Man. But this is a, a wood-burning stamp that he made. It's a tiger paw because he was Tiger Claws most well known for his Santa Claus carvings. But this piece of walnut that these bases are made in, again, everything is a, is a limited edition. There's, you know, when the stuff is gone, it's gone. Um. <clears throat> Carla, get over yourself. <laughs> So these are um, walnut. This came from a tree that came from Claus Mann's grandfather's farm. So he took the walnut logs and after they were cured or whatever they do, I don't know anything about it, but after they do whatever they have to do, then he turned, uh, created the bases and turned the, the bases so there's little pieces, there's little spots in here. So this is where he used a some kind of special tool and made the little bases so that they would fit. So anyway, this is, let me switch cameras and then I can show them to you up close. So this is this little guy. I think of him as more as being a monk, but you know, I don't know. They're just little miniature things. They can be elves, they can be whatever. They can be Carla's dirty old men. It's okay. But I painted the bases to look like they were standing on top of a piece of wood. So there's this little guy. I think they are just adorable. They're very small, you can tell. These are bird dogs to paint. Let me just tell let me just tell you that. They are bird dogs to paint. <laughs> as far as hanging on to them. They're fun, but they're challenging. They're fun, but they're challenging. Okay? Okay. Then we did big um, ornaments as well. Again, everything starts as wood, as an original wood carving. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly, Linda. There you go. So this is uh, was a wood carving, and then um, created, made a mold, and then created in resin. So this is resin. We still have some of the resin pieces, which maybe we'll put in the shop. I don't know. But anyway, I just wanted to show you. I've painted these with red hats, green hats, white hats. I don't know what all kinds of hats I've done. Um, because I have to keep challenging myself when I was in production doing a lot of these. I had to constantly um, make them different, you know. So anyway, there is that one. And he's like... Let's see. He's about four inches, give or take a little bit. Um, this this is not, we called this one naughty or nice, because he just kind of has that look, you know, like, bah, humbug. Like, I'm sick and tired of Christmas. And <laughs> Sick and tired of you people and holly jolly kiss my butt, right? <laughs> kiss my butt. <laughs> kiss my merry butt. Anyway, um, so we again have some of these still in resin. These we did not pour ourselves. We sent these out and had them molded. That was back when we were first starting it, and it was like um, the molds were incredibly expensive, and so we had to figure out how to do it. And nobody wanted to tell you how to do it, so it took a while. But anyway, so there he is. Bah humbug. Mm -hmm. And then I showed you, or told you, I think, maybe last week, that we had these four-faced Santas. And so that's what this guy is. This was my brilliant idea that we could do Santas that, you know, had multiple faces with one hat and one beard. And I thought, that is such a great idea. So Claus Man got busy, and boy, he just carved and carved and carved and carved and uh, came up with the ornament. And which I really liked. However, it took, the, the time is in painting the faces, and so it took me a long time to paint them. Again, I painted them with white hats, I painted them with red hats, and green hats, and whatever. So, anyway. We call, called them four-faced Santas. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Could have been a lot. I don't know. So just to show you that we don't always do Santas. This is um, one of our better selling pieces in the regular pieces. <laughs> and um, we've given this one away a few times I'm sure everybody here knows this person I'm sure you've seen this person you could be married to this person you could be related to this person you could work for this person <clears throat> right Sherry <laughs> um, we've given this to kids when they've graduated from high school or college Mostly college. <clears throat> Hello, art with your heart out. Is that Katie? Stinking funny. The name of this one is Head Up the Butt. <clears throat> For obvious reasons, this one, again, this is his necktie. This one started out as wood. Katie, I showed your card earlier. Thank you so much for your card. That was so nice. Um, thank you again. Uh, so anybody who's easily offended, if you're offended by this, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Anyway, we've given this to a number of, of um, kids that were getting started on their career path and saying, you know, just um, you're going to run into this guy. So just so you know, when you run into him, you can just laugh about it because you've already you have uh, you know that he modeled for this thing and you have it in your possession. And so you can just laugh about it and move on. Right. <laughs> anyway. So just so you know, we don't always do Christmas. We don't always do everything so seriously. Okay. Funny, huh? All right. So that's that. Um, any questions from anybody? I was trying to... <clears throat> Yeah, if anybody's easily offended, I'm sure they've already gone away. <laughs> There's still quite a few of you here, so. Either we're all collectively troubled or uh, something. I don't know. Could be a professor that's right. My dad was a professor. I think he fit that mold, but he's not here to defend himself, so we won't say that. <laughs> right? <laughs> Okay, so um, this is back to the guy that I started painting last week because now that I've t totally traumatized Carla, um, yeah, it's just, we're going to get back to painting. I did base coat his, um, the birdhouse, so I base coated that, and this does fit in here. Still a bit of a tight fit. But um, we'll get that sorted out. Anyway, everything looks very, very garish when you start out. Meaning the colors are super bright. Super bright. <clears throat> hey, Shannon. How do you get the four-faced Santas? Um, depends on... Uh, if we... It depends on what I do. Um, if you're wanting, if you're wanting one that is completely finished like this, they'll will eventually get them in the Etsy shop probably in the next couple of weeks or so. I hope. And we do have some of these that are um, haven't been painted that are just the resin pieces, so they'll be in the Etsy shop. So what you need to do is. Um, Hang on, I'll, I'll put it in here. Actually, I don't remember what it is. Hang on just a minute. See, normally I'm not doing this. Hang on a minute. I mean, I'm looking in the chat here for just a second so everybody hang on there we go all right got it as soon as i can get myself in the chat okay that should um come up there there it is there's the etsy shop so if you want to click on that and bookmark it that would be a good thing to do. Okay, so we're going to paint, okay? We're going to paint. I know the lights are kind of blowing out my painting here, but that's the how of it. Okay, so what I normally do when I'm painting them is I normally work on uh, the face first. Uh, I'm probably going to have to do both. I'm going to have to probably work around because normally when I'm doing these, I'm doing a bunch of them. So I'll do one step on all the faces and then go to the next step. And so by the time I get done with all the faces for a whole bunch of them, then I will, um, the first one's dry. So we'll see how this works. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna get out a couple of colors of paint
and then we're going to paint. So the colors I'm using um, are Folk Art, because that's the brand I like for this color. I've tried literally every paint brand <laughs> of this color, which is Burnt Sienna. Okay, Burnt Sienna. I've tried every brand of this, this color. This is the one I like. We all develop our own things, you know what I mean? And this is the color of red I like for this, which is tomato spice. This is what I use for faces. I'm telling you all my secrets here. All of my secrets. Okay, once I start this, which I am now started into this, I probably, you need to save your questions for me till the end <laughs> because I can't watch the chat and do this or it becomes a real, real problem for me. Okay, so I have two brushes here. And normally the way this works is I have one in my mouth. I will show you. Normally when I'm painting, come on, there we go. Normally when I'm painting, I have this one in my mouth and this one I'm painting with. Uh -huh. That's usually how this works. So if you hear me all of a sudden not speaking well, it's because I've put the brush in my mouth. I'm trying not to do that. Okay. And then I have um, a rag here, which sometimes, most of the time, it's a pad of paper towels, but we're going to, I'm going to try working with this cloth. Okay, so I'm wetting the brush. I'm working with angled brushes, cheap brushes. I have one, both of them are damp. Okay, both of them are damp. One is my cleanup or blending brush, and the other one is my painting brush. So most, my process for most things is side loading the brush and the brush is wet. I don't know if you can see that. The brush is wet. The corner, the edge is loaded with paint and then blended and then I just start painting. The trick to all of this is, I'm going to try and keep this where you can see it and where I can see it. The trick to this is to blend as you go. And this is where I can get real quiet. And because I'm working with washes of paint, you cannot let the dry the edge dry. If you intend to blend it, you have to blend it as you go. There's a fine line <clears throat> between um, there's a very fine line between too wet and too dry. And you always have to watch where the brush is going because if you don't, you end up putting paint just like that where you didn't want it to go. So, there you go. I've tried doing this all different kinds of ways. I'm sure that some people have, I'm sure you might have a better way to do it than I do. Um, that's perfectly fine. You know, I've tried doing this all different kinds of ways. I've tried shortcutting the process. Um, yeah. You have to do what works for you, you know? You have to do what works. Sometimes the brush gets too wet, and then it makes a mess. Sometimes it's not wet enough, and that makes a mess. So anyway, so I've told you the process, so now I'm just going to paint. Um, and I thought maybe I would tell you the story about when I was a kid and how we celebrated Christmas. And 
what our traditions were like. As soon as I get myself kind of organized to begin with here. Sometimes I put the shading on and sometimes I take it right back off accidentally then I have to come in and I have to do it again. I'm not a fast painter. I have painted literally hundreds of pieces through the years. Um, I am still not a fast painter, particularly when it comes to the faces, because the faces are the, the part that, that makes the, um, the whole piece. See, I can't even talk and do this. Okay, so there's the beginning of the face. Okay, if you're going to add more paint, you got to wait till the first layer, the first coat dries. If you go back too soon, you get to make yourself a mess and so forth and so on. Normally, I do not use a um, heat gun with these. However, that's what I'm going to do with this one. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, you guys. I'm going to use the heat gun to set the paint, except my heat gun's not plugged in, so that would be very helpful if the heat gun was plugged in. So give me a second. I got to untangle the rat's nest of cord so I can plug it in. Okay. Okay, so that should be dry. And I will work on these faces until I get them the way that I like them. Um, yeah, that's just what I do. It's just what I do. And then I get myself confused as to which brush was the one I had paint on, so I have to clean them both out. And... Um, so then I know that I'm good. All right, so I'm going to put his cheeks on next. And cheek color, I like um, Tomato Spice by Delta Ceram Coat. So I like the Tomato Spice. Again, I side load the brush and put on the cheeks. And because he is outside where it's cold, I give him a rosy nose as well. Okay. <clears throat> And if I put on too much paint, I will quickly take it back off. <clears throat> I often have to do this, do things more than once because um, I will put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off, you know. <clears throat> I 
like to have the face completely done before I go on to the rest of the uh, piece because then I know what he's going to look like. Okay. And then I like to give him a little bit of a A little bit of a red lip. <clears throat> and you just have to wait and see what they look like as they dry. Um, you just I just develop them a little bit at a time and I often have to go back and add a much greater shading. <clears throat> but I do it in layers. I don't try to get it all in one go because if I try and get it all in one, um, I just can't ever get the right color, the right depth of color. But you have to have enough dark in anything you do. You have to have enough dark Otherwise, it looks flat. So I'll take a break here in a minute and uh, see what if you have questions for me. But at the moment. I'm not watching the chat. Okay. <clears throat> and working on the wood pieces like this, the real wood pieces, the paint dries fairly quickly. On the resin pieces, that is not the case. The resin pieces, you have to allow time because it's resin is basically plastic. Okay. So you have to allow time. It takes much longer. for the paint to dry because it's sitting on the surface where with the wood it's um, it can penetrate often why I have to go back in and uh, add more <clears throat> and then you stand and just look at him okay I don't know if Dorothy's still here but the next part of this operation is going to freak Dorothy out because Dorothy <clears throat> doesn't like blank eyes <laughs> so Dorothy it's good it would be a good time for you to click off right now <clears throat> You use tiny, tiny, tiny little bits of paint in this process. Tiny little bits of paint. <clears throat> and I am <clears throat> not right down on the acrylic paint because I don't want to blister it. I'm just wafting it over the top. <clears throat> not to, this does not cure the paint, it just simply sets it. Okay, so I'm going to use, this is light ivory, and I'm going to put in the first part of his eye. This is where I have to let the carving dictate what's going to happen. So I put in the white of his eye. This is tedious in here. This is tedious. So and that's why I'm probably 
not going to talk a lot here for a minute. <clears throat> I try to get the first part of the eyes to be, see it looks very creepy. Uh, I try to get the first part of the eyes to be the same size regardless of what the carving tells me. I get the shape depending on the carving, the size I try to do myself. Um, okay, so I'm going to let this sit and dry for a little bit because that has to be dry before we can do anything else, okay? Okay. So I have this little birdhouse, so let's deal with the birdhouse. We'll start with the birdhouse. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm going to start out with, um, let's see, I'm going to use gray. This is neutral gray. I don't know if this is, this paint is so old. Bless its heart. <laughs> Bless its heart. It's still hanging in there, but it is old. So this is Deco Art um, Americana Neutral Gray is what I'm using. And I'm going to do the same process. I'm just going to begin the shading process. So I side load the brush and then I just pick a spot and I start. And this is, this is the first thing I do. Then if I decide that I want to add, you know what I can see is I can see a little um, perch with a little bird on it. Claws man's gonna kill me. Yeah, he's gonna kill me. But that's what happens when I do these. Um, I just see these fun things show up. can't go too fast or you get sloppy and then you get sloppy nothing works and you're like oh, slow down kids slow down okay So I'm just taking, I guess I could come in a little tighter so you could see a little bit more of what I'm actually doing, huh? <clears throat> the danger of zooming in and getting too close is then, then I um, get out of the shot. So because I have a very narrow window of where I can hold the piece so you can actually see it. So if I get out of the shot, I'll eventually see it and I'll get back in. Once I decide, once I let the shading part dry and I decide what I'm thinking about the whole thing, then I will come back and often I will add more details. You know, I'll paint a pattern or, you know, decoration of some kind on it. Okay, so we'll let that sit and let that dry. Okay, and so now I'm going to work on the roof, and so for the roof, I'm going to use, um, this is soft black.
it, you got to squirt out. It, it's kind of a wasteful process in some ways because you have to squirt out enough paint uh, that it doesn't dry up right away. But um, I often lose. Let's see if I can get this where you can see it. Okay. Um, I often lose the paint. You know, it often dries up on me no matter what. As I told you last week, no matter what I do, I've tried all kinds of Stay Wet palettes and all kinds of things. I've tried adding Retarder to the paint, Extender, Slow Drying Mediums. Yeah. Nothing really works, so I just... Oops, sorry. So I just eventually go with what works for me, which is just squirt out the paint. Okay. <clears throat> My eyes are um, quite nearsighted, which means that I can't see far away. But I can see close up really well. So, nearsighted doesn't make, I guess it means I can see near, but I can't see far, huh? I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, most of the time, I end up painting these uh, without my glasses on because I can see up close but but I also have it about two inches away from my face which doesn't allow me to hold it under the camera very easily without um, sticking my head under there and that's no good <clears throat> So you wouldn't think that these layers of paint and all this stuff would make any difference, but maybe it just makes me feel better. I don't know. That's what I like, so it's what I do. Always chasing the wet edge is what I call it. Okay, now um, I'm going to just pick up some of this um, soft black and I'm just going to kind of dry brush it. down the wood and sometimes I have to go back and I have to um, touch this kind of thing up because sometimes it takes us it takes us a minute to get these uh, something like this to get the accessory to fit right so I may have to go back and touch this up again later but what I'm doing is just um, dry brushing it so that it gives a little bit more texture of the wood like so all right and then I think up here on the 
birdhouse roof. I'm going to do something similar, but maybe the combination of, see, that paint's already dried up. Ugh, irritating. Irritating. Could be because there's not much left in this bottle. See that? That is no good. <laughs> Alright, get out of there. Mm hmm. Such is the joy of acrylic paint. The good news is that's enough paint to do what I need to do. <laughs> oh, goodness. No kidding, kidding. That was a major paint booger, and that's what that was. That was a major paint booger right there. Okay. <clears throat> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, pick up some of this tomato spice red with a dry brush or sort of dry brush. And just add a little bit of red to the roof. And if I do something and decide I don't like it, I will come back over this and I will paint it, paint over it in a heartbeat, you know? Until the varnish goes on, and I have been known to change something even after I've varnished it. You know, if it doesn't suit me, it doesn't suit me, and that's the how of it. Okay, so now let me um, come back out where you might be able to see it a little bit more. So the little birdhouse is shaded and it now has a little bit of a red roof on it. I'm trying to give you accurate color, but it's uh, a bit of a challenge there. It looks kind of like a rusty tin roof. And it's on a wooden pole kind of thing. Okay, so there's our little um, birdhouse. Okay, let's go to the next um, the next part of the eye. And that is going to be, and you always have to watch, you know, your hands. Because if you don't watch your hands, you could slop stuff right where you don't want it. All right, so this is a blue um, paint, just kind of a baby blue. And I'm going to, I'm just going to paint out the lid because I need so little paint. I don't put their eyes, the pupil of the eye or the iris, either one, I don't put them straight in the middle of the eye. I don't like that. And so... I almost always set them off um, to the side. But I li like to leave room on the, uh, the left eye as I'm looking at it, okay? I like to leave room for a tear duct. So what you have to know is that when you do eyes, that 
they're going to be two they have to be they have to go together and yet they're going to look different okay i'm just going to let you chew on that for a minute Alright, so he's beginning to look somewhere. Yeah, they can look shocked and they also can look, um, it depends on, it's when you get to the sparkle dot, that's where you can blind the eye. <laughs> so I try very hard not to blind the eye. Alright, so again, that has to dry. Okay, that part has to dry. So I'm done with the blue, so I can put this away. So maybe what we can do is, while that dries, is start working on the um, shading on the coat. Let me read the chat here for a minute. Okay, let me take a break and read the chat. Um... Okay, I don't see any questions. If you have questions, put them in. I know, Jamie, we like doing detail. It's true. It's true. I watched your um I watched your video, Jamie, on on the diorama, 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 whatever it is, um, that you did on the pumpkin. If you guys haven't seen that, check out APG Jamie's um YouTube channel because she did a really fun pumpkin and a diorama in it. It's really cool. Jamie's answer my question is cool. Hi Lisa. Oh you got it. Oh good. Good. Got there safely today. Hi, Lena. Lena, okay. Lena, I'm just going to say that just straight up, you have ruined onions for me. <laughs> you have completely and utterly ruined onions for me. I'll never look at onions again the same way. I don't know if, if Lena still has that video up or not, but it was her last video that she put up. Um, and she has a story in there that I laughed. And I mean, I, I don't laugh like that usually. And I laughed. It was one of those belly laugh kind of laughs because she tells a story about her husband and onions. <laughs> Hysterical. Oh my gosh. So funny. Uh, yeah, you too, huh? Oh, that's funny, Lisa. That's funny. Sorry, but we're going to have to do this. Okay. Let's go back to said Santa. I'm trying to get to the place where I can tell you the story. Maybe I can hit this with a heat gun. I'll tell you about Christmas. Alright, maybe that's skinned over enough that I can use it. Let's see. Normally I use really dark black, but what I have out here is the um, soft black, so that's what I'm going to use.
So if you have, if you want to have <clears throat> a good laugh, um, you'll have to go watch <clears throat> Miss Linux. Hi, Alicia. Miss Linux 2010. You're gonna have to go watch her video. Oh my goodness, that was the funniest thing. The funniest thing ever. Besides that, you should you should subscribe to her channel because she's an amazing artist. <clears throat> I had to take off the glasses so I can do this. Otherwise, I can't do it. The other thing um, with Santas and faces and all that kind of stuff is sometimes it takes a minute to get, sometimes it takes a couple of faces to get your rhythm going. I haven't painted one of these for a while, so we'll see how it goes. The other thing about this is you got to remember this is just a fantasy face. So, don't stress out. It's just a little fantasy kind of face. Okay, good enough. Moving on. My favorite words in the entire universe. Good enough, moving on. Now, I'm going to put his eyebrows in because they look real weird until they get eyebrows. They look real weird at any stage until they're done, but I'm going to put his eyebrows in. Let's see if this pile of white is usable. Yeah, good enough. All right, so I'm going to just put in some eyebrows. Claus Man always has one um, impression of what these pieces are going to look like. And most of the time I'll have a different one, so sometimes we just have to concede somewhere in the middle. But they usually turn out to be, whoops, sorry, trying to remember to look in the monitor. So sometimes he doesn't carve them quite the way I think that they're going to be and sometimes he doesn't I don't paint them the way he thinks they're going to be but you know we just kind of go with the flow okay so that's good enough 
All right, I am pushing the eyes because that black paint was pretty wet. Let me do a little heat. Hello, Shu. Hi, Cheryl. Um, Charlie is making good, steady progress in a positive direction. Um, he's not progressing by leaps and bounds, but he's making some good, steady progress. And he was on camera at the beginning of the stream. So... Sorry, I'm trying to... Trying to um, not screw this up. <laughs> Sometimes that's easier said than done. I have been known to paint the whole thing, the whole face, and then come back and... Have to do the eye or something again. All right, good enough for the moment. And then I like to do a little um, red dot in the corner of the eye, kind of like the tear duct. Um, And sometimes until the eye is completely finished, this part seems like in your face, kind of, you know, way too much. Okay. But I will show you that on every face that I have those red dots are in the corners of the eyes whether you realize they are or not Sam it's just part of what I like to me, it's part of what is necessary. Are you kidding me? Did not have... Somewhere along the line, I hit the record button and quit recording, but it'd still be on YouTube, so it's fine. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows what I did? <clears throat> it's that kind of, kind of day. Anyway, I like the the uh, red dots in the corners of the eyes. Okay, moving on. Where was I? Um, okay. So here is this is the eye so far. There's still some more steps that have to be done to the eyes, but that at least gives him the, you know, that way he's looking somewhere, right? So let's work on his, um, the facial beard, mustache, etc. And I think, yeah, I think I'm going to use this soft gray maybe. 
Yeah, let me get a lighter gray, so hang on just a minute. I'll let you look at him for a second. Okay, I'm going to use mudstone um, to, because the color that I really like, they don't make anymore, so we're going to use this mudstone and I'm going to go through the same process I'm going to come out a little bit further I'm going to use the same process that I did when I was starting out the face with the shading so I'll have two brushes going I'm going to use a bigger brush for his beard okay so you can just watch and I'll see if I can now tell you the story of how we celebrated Christmas when I was a kid. <laughs> I've been trying to get there. I've been trying to get there from all the day. So when I was a kid, little kid, there were five kids in my family. Five girls to be precise. And um, I'm the I am the baby of the family. And um, Christmas was a big deal in our family. Big, big deal. And so what we would do is my mother, in order to get everybody to make their bed and stuff, you had this you had this this whole ritual, you know, where you got up in the morning and you had to get dressed, make your bed. Everything had to be in order. You know, you had to wash your face, brush your teeth, do all that stuff. And everybody had to do that. So you can imagine, of course, the five of us were not at home very long because I was a lot younger than than the rest of the kids in the family. So there weren't five of us for too many years. So you had to get all ready. And then we had to line up at the door to go into wherever the Christmas tree was, usually in the living room. And um, so you'd line up according to age and so the youngest got to go in first well that was pretty cool except as I just mentioned um, I was a lot younger than the rest of them so there came a point in time when I was pretty young that they the older ones started you know they got married and started having kids <laughs> then when they came home for Christmas I quickly lost my privilege of being the first one to go in for Christmas. Yeah. Rotten little kids. <laughs> and so yeah, that's what we how we did our Christmas celebration. So then we'd go in the living room where the stockings had been filled magically and uh, there were toys and gifts and whatever of course the more kids there were the fewer gifts that there were under the tree and I don't know how Santa always knew but he needed to um, label everything with who got what um, so I always found that interesting that he took the time to write the names on things <laughs> yeah anyway so but man I'm telling you my mother could make us wait boy to go in that room you know until we till everything had passed inspection
Absolutely. Had to pass inspection. The beds had to be made. Of course, she knew if anybody went in there, you know, got started playing with toys or looking at stuff, you know, that there weren't there weren't going to be any beds made. So I don't know if she was that picky about being beds being made or if it was just part of the just part of the ritual that they had established. I don't know. Because like I said, I was a lot younger than the rest of them. So they'd been doing that for a few years before I came along. Before I was old enough to... I mean, their traditions were already established by the time I was part of the group. So our traditions in our little family weren't um, quite like that because we had, we didn't have so many kids. We had um, my husband's daughter and then our son. So our little traditions weren't quite that dramatic because we didn't have that many kids. So anyway, Christmas was a big, big deal, a big, exciting deal in our family. And so we would, we would have to take turns opening our stockings. And our stockings always had um, an orange or a tan or a tangerine. It was most of the time it was a tangerine because it was something easy to peel. And we didn't get them very often. But almost always there was a tangerine <clears throat> in the toe of the Christmas stocking. And sometimes there were nuts. And fortunately, nobody ever had any nut allergies in our family. That was good. And then there were usually, there were there was gum and um, toothpaste and when you got older and stinkier you got deodorant and you know stuff like that not a lot of toys mostly stuff like that that you got in the stockings I'm sure you can tell by my halting speech that it is a challenge for me to talk <laughs> and do this. <laughs> it's true. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do now... My paintbrushes are so crappy that the paint is falling off of the paintbrush handle. Now I'm going to work on the mustache. And I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I do try to paint with the largest brushes that I can paint with because I find that I get through the job quicker and I also get a um, smoother blend most of the time. So we would spend the, the it, by the time you had five kids and two parents, and then if we had any visitors, they always got a stocking as well. And by the time you took turns going around the room and everybody got to ooh and ah over the opening of the stocking, it took a while. It absolutely took a while. And then we had to have breakfast. And then after the breakfast, um, and the dishes had to be done, of course. Everything had to be done. 
and then um, we would open gifts after that. And again, it was one gift at a time, you know, we would take turns. And so, of course, it would make it last a really long time, which was, that was a lot of fun to make it last, you know, because otherwise it was over and done with and nothing flat, you know. Okay. So while I'm here, um, in this area, I think his eyes are dry enough now that I can come in and side load the brush with some of the gray. And I'm going to come, this is kind of overkill, this brush. All right, I'm going to have to go to a smaller brush. I can't get in there. And what I'm doing is setting his eyes back into his head a little bit more. I don't know whether you can be able to see that or not. But I don't know if you can tell the difference between this eye and this eye. I can, but I don't know if you can. I come across the top of his eye, um, but underneath the eyebrow, to begin setting his eye back into his head so he doesn't look quite so scary. Then I'm going to see if I can come up with enough burnt sienna down here under the skin. So I've pulled the skin of the paint back. I'm going to get a little bit of burnt sienna. Side loaded again. And I'm going to give him some eye bags because of course every Santa is going to have eye bags and wrinkles, right? There we go. Okay. The danger in small faces is that you turn it all one color and you lose all the dimension that you are trying to build into it. But there his eyes have a little more dimension going on. There's a few more steps before the eyes really clear up, but uh, he's getting there. He's getting there. Dark colors recede. So if you want to give something the illusion of things going away, you use a darker color or a duller color. A duller color. And then you let it dry and you see what it's going to look like because things, the colors change as they dry. Okay.
All right, I'm going to finish putting the shading on the um, on the white parts of his robe, the trim around his robe. You also have to remember that when I, when you're working on stuff like this, you're looking at it right under your nose. When you're looking at it right under your nose, um, you're going, oh no, that's terrible. It's kind of like painting a mandala. You're looking at it right so close to yourself that you pick up every little quote unquote mistake. And actually the piece is going to be viewed from most of the time from across the room, literally. So got to get over yourself. Always have to be aware of the wet edge. And you can only blend a wash like this or a uh, side loaded brush. You can only blend it when it's wet. You know, if you let it dry, no blending. There is no blending to be accomplished. So, if you don't want a stripe of color, you got to do it while it's wet. And different people have different methods of doing this kind of thing. I know. I'm just showing you what I do. And when there is something that is um, shading, like this hand here is going to be shading uh, the robe, you can get away with um, darker color there. But I'm just constantly looking at it and assessing, which is why it's hard for me to talk because I'm constantly looking and thinking. <laughs> That's why it's hard for me to talk. Yeah, aside from the fact that I got that croup. <laughs> no, it's just allergy stuff. You also have to be aware of the fact that that edge there or that section where I'm painting is wet. I know it goes without saying, but you got to be careful that you don't stick your hand right in it. Because if you stick your hand in it, you put a big old massive fingerprint in it, especially and if it's at just the right stage of dryness. You can't blend it out, so you gotta paint it over and start again. So Christmas breakfast for us um, consisted for many years of, um, you see what a sloppy mess I have there that I didn't even know I had. I didn't even know I'd screwed that up. You see that green paint? Yeah, big mistake. We'll fix that in a minute here. 
I didn't even see that until right this minute. I'm sure you guys have been looking at it going, what's she going to do with that? That's a big mess. That's a big fat mess. And you would be correct. Anyway, my mom would make um, sweet rolls, like cinnamon sweet rolls. And then um, it's somewhere along the line that changed to a recipe called sweet petals. And any of you that have been hanging around me very long know that we generally do a, new, a Christmas Eve stream here where I make the sweet petals live so everybody gets to participate in our holiday tradition. Um, So, yeah, we almost always do that. I think we've missed a couple of years, maybe, since I've been streaming. But that is a big tradition in our family, is sweet petals. And they're just a different version of a sweet roll that are formed into looking like a flower. Hence the name Sweet Petals. All right, so let's go back and fix this mess over here. I mean, this is just how it goes. You know, you just constantly work back and forth and back and forth and you go, how did I screw that up? Well, it just happens. It just happens. And if you use the same paint colors, um, if you establish a palette of paint colors and you use those paint colors all the time, then you can come back and you can straighten things back up because you know what color you used. Yep. This is probably going to take a couple of coats of paint in here to uh, cover up that green mess that I got going down there. All right, so we've got his coat pretty well along. And so now I'm going to try to keep my hand out of everything. And I'm going to do his cuffs on his robe, his or cuffs on his sleeves. And I'm going to use the same colors of, um, the same color of paint, which is this, what did I say it was? Mudstone. I have a ceiling fan going on and so it's drying my paint even faster than it normally does. Just for air movement in here. We have been all over the map temperature wise here this week. Uh, we have been, yesterday it was in the mid to, it was in at least the middle 80s uh, Fahrenheit. And today I think we're down in the 40s or something. It's like ugh. crazy, crazy bananas temperature change. So yesterday when I walked, it was so hot and I even went out early but you talk about warm because the the um, humidity was up that's what always gets you is the humidity right APG I don't even know if APG is still here APG Jamie I try to do all the shading on the white first and then come back and do the shading on the robe after that. Um, that goes back to my oil painting days when you always painted the white first. Because um, if you didn't paint the white first, you regretted that decision. Especially if there was red anywhere around because red 
If you um, painted something in red and then you tried to come back and paint white next to it, oh, well, you just had instant pink, that's all. There was absolutely no way around it. And this is probably the only one of these that will get painted this year, so the rest of them will be available. If anything that Clawsman gets carved will um, go in the Etsy shop unpainted um, because I just literally don't have the time. to devote to the painting part of it anymore. And one of our collectors asked me a couple weeks ago if we were going to have Santas this year because sometimes we've had 20 or 30 Santas that were finished, you know, ready for um, him to show. But as How to Get Creative has gotten busier and it, there just hasn't been that opportunity to do that. Okay, let me move this out of the way and I will let you take a look at him. So yeah, there's still a little bit more to do on his um, on his eyes, and of course his robe, the under robe and the overcoat aren't finished at all. Neither is his mitten. And we'll give this another coat of white while we're here. I still don't know how I did that. I must have just set it in the green paint. <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> no clue. It's probably going to take one more coat of paint yet. Oh well, it is what it is. Sometimes I have paint on my hands and then I pick up the, the piece and then plop a big old nasty fingerprint of some, you know, white on top of his red robe or something. You know, it's just every once in a while you just sort of look at yourself and you go, how could you be that? you know, unaware. <laughs> it happens. So here's his little birdhouse, which matches his eyes. And then I'm sure I'll put some sort of red and green trim or something on it so that it ties the piece together. Anyway, there is our little Santa in process. Um, so yeah, so there's some palette and some brushes and some whatever so you can kind of see what I was working on right and it just all of this happens I just use craft paints when I'm working on it I just use craft acrylic paints when I'm doing this because that's what works for me okay so that's that so does anybody have any questions? I'm going to come to the chat now. I managed to do this without hacking up a lung too much today. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Joan. You are always so kind. Uh, hi, Brooke. You want to squeeze his cute head? <laughs> hi, Sharon. Hi, Julie. Oh, I missed a ton of people. Sorry, you guys. I just can't watch the chat when I paint. Otherwise, it's just a disaster. It's a disaster. You know, it's like the guy that backed into the airplane propeller. Old joke. What happened when the guy backed into the airplane? Airplane? No. What happened when the lady backed into the airplane propeller? Disaster. 
Yeah, that was a kid joke. Man, we used to say that, and we just thought that was the funniest thing. Because the only time you could get away with saying ass. Disaster! Yeah, I know. I oh, know. Crazy, huh? Um, so, anyway. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Hi, Tam. You like the Santas. Dorothy, I got his eyes in enough that they, they aren't too, too awful. <laughs> All right. So I think that is that. And um, I don't see any questions coming up in the chat. So with that, um, I think we're going to, we're going to take off. Remember that this little guy, this is the most recent addition to the Etsy shop. He's a snowman with a little penguin that can go on his hat or go beside him on the snow. And he has a little hand carved pipe. So if you want him, he's in the shop. Alright, I will see you guys um, next Friday. Next Drama Free Friday. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I don't see anything else that is on my list of things to tell you. Come over and join us at howtogetcreative.com. We would love to have you be a member. We have lots and lots and lots of classes and tips and tricks videos and VIP membership, which is the best deal because you get a break. If you pay for the whole year, you get a little break on it. You get classes every month, live classes every month. Um, or you get a class and a live show and share unless something happens. Um, and so, yeah, we'd love to have you come over and do that. You're always welcome. And with that, remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. And I'll see you before you know it. Have a good weekend, everybody. See you soon.